兄ちゃん。何おはようございます。Welcome to fucking Claptrap Desu. I'm Trent. And I'm dead inside. We're talking about anime. I. Kill me. <laughs> I, I, want, I want out of this. Um, there's the door. So、hard. Oh, oh, the cringe. Oh, I mean, okay, whatever. Yeah, there's a lot of cringe around anime, I guess. But、uh, as an art form, there's nothing really wrong with it, I don't think. No, no.、Uh, visually, it's stunning. Yeah.、Um, I think there's a lot that can be done with the art form. Narratively, there's a lot. I've always maintained the opinion that narratively, cartoons are better. If you give it the TLC it needs, because anything is achievable through animation. I, I fully agree with you there. Absolutely, 100%. That being said, the goddamn weeaboos ruin it for a lot of people. Um, You're not wrong. You're not wrong about that at all. So, Zed, why don't we, why don't we open this,、uh, this discussion of anime with you talking about your grievances with it and,、uh, and weeaboos? I don't have. <laughs> it, it's fun to. I shit on weeaboos because it's like a meme to do. Yeah. It's, like, it's come to the point where weeaboos are shitting on weeaboos. Yeah. And like, I just. I don't actually have anything against weeaboos. It's just really fun. And it's become such a habitual thing for me. I don't put a lot of、yeah. thought into my actions.、Um, I think I first started the war against the weebs. <laughs> the war against the weebs. When I was. Attack roughly, on weeaboo. Roughly 16 years of age, we were sitting there. And, um. Oh, I would have been around for this, huh? Fucking. Her name started with P. Was sitting there with, uh. You remember the bigger fella that sat with us as well? Who was sort name of. Name starts with an A? I don't know. But. Okay. We were sitting there, and they were talking about anime. And they asked me, and I said, I don't really watch anime. So, name started with A goes, I can respect that. And name started with P goes, I can't respect that. That's not the correct way to live. And from that moment on, I've been at war with the weebs. Are you sure she wasn't joking? I don't know.、Um, But I'm at war with the weebs, and I will continue this war until I die. Well, like all good wars, it started from a misunderstanding. <laughs> Probably, yeah.、Um, that's cool. I mean, yeah, some, some people definitely take it too far.、Mm-hmm. And that's where the whole we problem comes from.、Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I, I feel like there are a whole lot less of those people around now who,、yeah. back in the day, back when the, the term weeaboo was first coined, which is,、uh, I'm not actually sure when that happened or what like, was the origin of it, but. I'm guessing it was around Naruto and, Kill a Ki- Naruto and Kill a Kill. It had to have been. Kill a Kill? That is, how, that is the show, isn't it? I mean, Kill a Kill is a show, but it came out like three years ago. No, it didn't. Yes, it did. Did it really? Yeah. Because I've seen a lot of cringe surrounding that show. What? No. Yeah.、What? Kill a Kill is thinking, awesome. I may be thinking about the wrong, a different show, but like, as far as. What, what, what is this show? What, like, what's in it? Oh, yeah, the,、uh, the, the, the schoolgirl costume. I've seen a lot of Weeaboo cringe surrounding that. Well, I guess so, but I haven't really.、Um, really? Yeah, ha- I guess had- Weeaboos aren't, aren't as prevalent nowadays. I don't know.、Mm-hmm. You, I don't know. Maybe you just saw one or two examples of some very strong cringe because there are still some, some cringy weebs out there. But,、uh, but back, back when, when weebing was at its height, it, it was bad. It was real、yeah. bad. You had these guys going around. It, it got to the point they were like, you know, we should fucking model our fucking nation's politics after Japan because Japan is the holy land. And、uh, katanas can cut through tanks. That was a whole thing. Weebs really thought、uh, like、Japanese swords could like, cut through metal or something and would never break for some reason.、Um, and just like anything that came from Jalio Nippon was like fucking literally a godsend. 
to these guys, <laughs> and and it, it's it, it's super fucked up and weird, really. Mm-hmm. Um, and okay. it all came from anime because you know anime is the only like experience these guys had with Japan, I guess, and it kind of gave them a skewed perspective of it. Anime has taught me things about Japanese culture because I've seen a lot of anime. And so, you know, I'm familiar with some aspects of Japanese culture by consuming their media. But uh, I, I can, I can, you know, I don't think it's hard to pick out what is a, a product of the medium and what is a product of the culture it's created in. You know, I've learned about the Japanese school system a little bit because a lot of, you know, animes are based in schools. Uh, a mm-hmm. lot of animes do also have samurai like cutting buildings in half. I've realized, you know, that's probably not happening in Japan. That's probably just an anime thing. Yeah. So I don't know. Somewhere, somebody can't like figure out the differences there. I think my other gripe with Weeaboo was a uh, farmer's obsession with Naruto. Got under my skin at to a certain point. Um, yeah. And I think... I I grew up with Naruto. I grew up liking Naruto, and it inspired, like, a lot of my creativity, um, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it's it's a very flawed show, looking at it as an adult. But, um, That's generally, there, there, were, there were a lot of things going good for it, you know? And uh, I liked it a lot. But the community surrounding naruto was very cringy Mm -hmm. as with any big mainstream anime we saw that you know um a few years ago i was more than a few years ago wasn't i guess it was 2013 when attack on titan came out Mm -hmm. god that's fucking forever ago but uh yeah, I remember when. But that yeah, was. that show got huge, and you know there were people running around with the the Survey Corps jackets on, going da 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 Jaeger, and just like I don't know, just I don't know, just the big boom about it and how obsessed people were with it was very autistic. Yeah, it's like the uh... and you know the anime, the anim- anisphere or whatever. I, I think it's like ninety percent definitely populated by autists. Mm-hmm. I think that's fair to say, mm-hmm. not in a, not in a bad way. Whatever, Aut- autism's fine. Everybody has it. We're all autistic, um, but fucking yeah, fucking weeaboos. For those that um, aren't too familiar with weeaboo culture, we can easily relate it to the Rick and Morty happening that happened about a year ago, <laughs> with the Szechuan sauce and the fanatics screaming in the streets oh and stuff like that. Like, How is anybody you, who knows about that not aware of Weeaboos, though? Because I could walk up to <clears> anybody <throat> at work right now, mention Szechuan Sauce, and they'll have something to say about the Rick and Morty fan base. Hmm. It was that mainstream. Because they were I, d- I didn't realize that. Uh, but yeah, I guess they literally rioted in the streets in most major cities across America for a day, so... Yeah. That was fucking weird, right? Yeah, that that happened. And then there was the whole internet thing where, you know, Rick and Morty fans were talking about how smart they are all the time. Yeah, just because the show talked about um, multiple realm theory, like there's a million possible realities and stuff like that. And then a bunch yeah, of something like that. And, you know, it, it, it made some points that, you know, you know, it didn't go out of its way to be like heavy, I no. don't think. No. Um, but because it said some things that weren't retarded once in a while, people were like, this is the smartest fucking show. Normies can't watch this show. Only I, the intellectual, can watch this show and truly understand the depth of its humor. It's so full of poop jokes. It's all poop and butt jokes. <laughs> I, not that there's anything inherently wrong with that. But, like, I just find it ironic that... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think you can have toilet humor and intellectual commentary in the same place, but, I, you know, just because Rick and Morty wasn't 100% retarded doesn't mean it was super deep, either. No, no, like, there's a lot of adult cartoons that I consider to be master, like, god-tier, but and okay. Rick and Morty's not on that list for me. <laughs> yeah. 
I just think um, it's some trash to be honest with you, I've only seen like one or two episodes of it, like on Adult Swim, just flipping through channels at night, mm-hmm. and I've never properly watched the show. Just kind of experienced it uh, secondhand. It's it's one of those shows that like really it massages your imagination with the imagery and the storytelling. I can appreciate that. But other than that, there, there's not much special about it. Um, one thing I will say that's that amused me is in the, one of the later episodes they were playing Minecraft VR, and, <laughs> <laughs> and Rick goes, you know. This game, like, you'd have to be autistic to enjoy this game. And and Morty goes, Rick, that's fucked up. And, and Or Morty goes, Rick, that's fucked up. And Rick goes, yeah, that's why I like it. So by, like, oh. saying Rick has, I think it has autism, was yeah. sort of like a big fuck you to the really toxic fan base, which I really appreciated. That's awesome. It is awesome. Um, you know, I've always thought I would enjoy the show, but I just haven't gotten around to it because, you know, I know there's such a, like a weird fan base about it. I was I was like about to start watching the show when the Szechuan sauce thing happened. Mhm. And and then I just kind of like eh, no, I'm not going to. Because I'm sure I'm sure the art in and of itself is, you know, quite yeah. quite good. Yeah, but, the art's know, good. And I I haven't I haven't yet watched Rick and Morty for the same reason I have not yet played Undertale. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, honestly, when it comes to Rick and Morty, there's a lot of things you can appreciate about the show. Mm-hmm. But you're better off, in my opinion, at least, you're better off spending your time with one of Matt Groening's shows or BoJack or something of a higher quality, or at least in my eyes, a higher quality. Okay. Well, yeah, uh, Rick and Morty is my favorite anime for sure. Yeah. We fucking sat there and talked about American cartoons for at least five, six minutes. Well, yeah. <clears throat> what is... What? It, it's all tied together. There's, yeah. there's this whole, you know... What what anime means is a cartoon from Japan. Mm-hmm. But the Japanese don't actually make a distinction. Anime is obviously just their word for cartoons, and it comes from yeah. the, the English word animation. It's just a... Just a... You know, their word for it. And, um... You know, in Japan, they would call Rick and Morty anime because they don't make a distinction between Western and Japanese-made cartoons. It's all just animation. Yeah, of course. And, uh... But, uh, you know, there's... There, out here, there's this whole subgenre of it, I guess, of animation called anime because... I, I, I do feel like a lot of the animation that comes out of Japan is very distinct and recognizable. Mm-hmm. Not that, you know, all anime, th- there's such a broad spectrum of what it can look like, but it all kind of, I don't know. It all, like, you know it's anime when you see you, it. You know it's anime. And I, I, I don't know if that's a stylistic thing or just, honestly, a skill thing. Because I, I can't think of any 2D animation coming out of America that just on, just in general looks as good as some of the best anime. Yeah, but, like, there's also the stereotypes, like, the way the eyes are drawn. You can always tell an anime character by their hair. Shit like that. So there's yeah. definitely some stylistic I mean, things. Th- there are so many shows that break those um, those conventions, though. But but you can still look at it and be like, that's anime. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, I guess that just really is the, the skillful uh, craft of it all. Because... Like I said, you know, there's plenty of good animation in America, but I, I don't. It's it's not as often paired with good art, <laughs> mm-hmm. in my opinion. Um, but I, I I don't know. It just isn't funded enough. It probably is funding. Yeah, America. There's there's still um a stigma here in the West about how animation is for children. Yeah. And 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 so you know, big big movies about like uh, serious themes and like fucking it it can't get any funding if it if it doesn't look like a goofy. Yes, and has a fart joke. I don't, you know. Well, shout out to Netflix for breaking away from that mold. Well, yeah, but Netflix is doing so much fucked up shit, like that's stupid now that I don't want to shout them out ever. What are they doing? Well, okay. Um, well, what do you mean with them breaking that mold about creating animation? 
Or like they're signing on different shows that that break away from that stereotype. Well, yeah, okay. Well, here's a recent example that made me kind of mad at Netflix. So, um, The Dragon Prince. Have you heard of this? Yeah, yeah. People were like screaming about it on Twitter when it first happened. Yeah, and uh, I was excited about it too. I heard the first announcement and... You know I'm not a man to get my hopes up about media. Mm-hmm. But I did about this one because it was it's written by Aaron E. Has, who was the good writer from uh, Avatar The Last Airbender. There yeah, were, absolutely. There were three of them, and one of them was Aaron E. Has, and he made The Last Airbender great, and then he left, and uh, Brian, uh, Brian and Mike, the other two guys, made The Legend of Korra, and it was absolute dog shit. So he was the, he was the good writer there, and it's like, oh my god, he's got his own show now. Um, it's a high fantasy show. It's going to be animated, and uh, one of the art directors, like lead art directors, is a an artist I've been following on Twitter for years and love their work. Uh, C T Chrysler, and um, and uh, uh, it just it just was all coming together like this is going to be my favorite show, and then Netflix comes out with this fucking. 3D CGI 2016 Berserk bullshit that looks like absolute garbage. Mm-hmm. And just like the, the this show, Aaron E has deserves like a like a, a Last Airbender level or a Legend of Korra level budget for a two, a good looking 2D animation. And they're obviously trying to cut corners and fucking save money by using the shitty looking 3D. Mm-hmm. And it just looks awful, and like they try to make it look like two D animation, it just makes it worse because like two D animation's got like a kind of a low frame rate. Actually, sometimes they can get uh, down to as low as twelve frames per second, but still look smooth. Mm-hmm. But that's just like an element of the medium. Um, and they try to like replicate that by having this three D show play at twelve frames per second or something. Mm-hmm. And uh, it looks like dog shit. It just looks jumpy. I've seen um, Nintendo DS cutscenes that look better than this show. I I'm looking at some stills of it. It doesn't look inherently bad. Like, wait, you have to see it move. I have to see it move. Yeah, okay, the animation. It looks jumpy and awful. And some 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 of the shots, like there was a chase scene, I think, in the first episode, that was so well directed. Mm-hmm. But, but the. The 3D animation was just jumping all over the place, and it was super weird. Yeah. I'm looking at... What'd you say? It's no Aaron's IMDb right now? Mm-hmm. He's, got, he's, got, he's got Avatar, Futurama... Like, Futurama from 2001 yeah. to 2011. That's amazing. Or, no, he's only written four episodes. Never mind. Or five. Still, though. Anybody who's well, touched Well, which Futurama. ones, though? That's that's the important question, because there were many episodes of Futurama, but only, you know, some a few standouts. I think they're all good. Like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a diehard fan. I, I think they're all good, but I think there are, you know, definitely some uh, yeah, I, I'm not masterpieces, good. you know, a, a dozen or so that are just so. Oh, yeah. If I find out, whoever whoever wrote the, uh, the dog episode, I'll suck your dick right now. <laughs> They actually um, retconned that. Bullshit. So what happened was, is in Bender's big score, Fry went back mm-hmm. to the past to to accomplish something or do something. And he just walks up to the dog and goes, oh, hey, bud. And he goes and lives his life for, like, many, many years until he was, like, older. And then he went back to the future looking completely different to win Leela's heart or something. What the fuck? Yeah, Bender's Big Score. Dude, fucking watch that shit. It's good. Uh, I, I will. It's I don't, I don't like retcons, though. It's not like a retcon. It's kind of a retcon, but in, in a in a show about time travel, I mean, come on. You you can fuck around. I, I guess you're right. I guess you're right. In a show about time travel, you've got to retcon everything constantly. Hashtag Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. Um, that's it, why I stopped watching Doctor Who, though, because it just convoluted itself and convoluted uh contradicted itself and just just overwrote things constantly Uh, that's one show and and it was all cyclical it was all very cyclical and uh whatever (laughs) that's one show that the fan base keeps me away from oh yeah the the doctor who fan base is 
awful. And uh, they've actually taken it over now because I don't know if you want to get into any like political debate now, but you you've heard about the new female doctor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's very much like a weird like fucking pandering thing in my eyes. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a Doctor Who fan, so I have nothing intelligent to contribute. I, I haven't been a Doctor Who fan in a long time since uh, I watched all of the first guy in, in, in the new Doctor Who, not the old, you know, mm-hmm. old school Doctor Who. But since they rebooted it in 2000, whatever, I started with that guy. I think he was what, yeah. the 10th Doctor. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, I watched his run, then I watched all of Dave and Tennant's, uh, who is my favorite doctor. I think he's everybody's favorite doctor. And uh, I watched a little bit into Matt Smith's run, and then I stopped. Hmm. It, it just I just lost interest. It just stopped being interesting. Like It wasn't that I'd made a conscious decision to stop watching it. It was that I no longer had a desire to turn it on. Yeah. So. Like... <sighs> Doctor Who suffers from, in my eyes, suffers from what JoJo suffers from. Like, it's subjectively uh, good, but I just ain't got the time or the give a fuck to watch every goddamn episode. I don't think every episode of Doctor Who, Doctor Who is good. Like, I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. With with the Futurama, it's like, hey, every episode's pretty good, and then you've got some really great ones once in a while. But with Doctor Who, it's kind of like, uh, most episodes are boring, but, you know... Once, once or twice a season, we'll get a real, you know, and yeah. uh, it's it's just not worth it to me. You'd think there'd be some sort of a bridged thing going on with it. Yeah, longevity is Doctor Who's whole, you know, reason for being. So, yeah, the, the clever writers figured out a way to keep it going. Which I mean, I don't even dislike. I think I think the. Uh, the fucking regeneration aspect of Doctor Who is super clever, and it and it works very well. But uh, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. I think it's I think it's neat. It's, it's just it's... that the the Doctor doesn't keep doing interesting stuff. He like he fights the Daleks and like oh there's I got a girlfriend. Oh no, I died. It's, I'm born again. Fight the Daleks. Get a girlfriend. I'm dying. I don't know. I think I would enjoy the old version better because I grew up on like original Star Trek, you know, so that and hmm. Lost in Space, so that yeah, like so old school sci-fi vibe. Yeah, yeah, that uh, the campiness of it I really love and appreciate. So, because I look at I've I've seen clips of the old and it looks like it's in that in that light, and I've seen oh, clips yeah. of the new and the new looks to be more like a TV drama. Um, I would say that's definitely a very good way of describing them. So I would probably like the old a lot better, just ba- just based on my nostalgic connections to shows I grew up on. Which I don't know, campy campy can be fun. It can be, and I and I appreciate campy. It's why I like Star Trek and Lost in Space and He Man and all that old campy shit. Bailey was telling me about Lost in Space. Her, uh, I think she and her dad used to watch it. It's so much fun. Um, didn't they like recently? It's, make a movie adaptation or something so they made a movie in the 90s which isn't very good and they did a netflix show <clears throat> and in the netflix show they completely threw a brick through a stained glass window you know mm-hmm. it's like complete reimagining serious tv drama and the original wasn't a serious tv drama the original was utter bullshit for the sake in of what bullshit way? like it started off as as a serious space adventure. Like, they mm-hmm. were going into space, they got lost, they fought all these aliens. But there was this Russian Russian dude named Dr. Smith who got on to sabotage the trip. <clears throat> and he got stuck because stuck he's the reason they were lost in space. And he became so popular that it eventually became... It went from the the intense sci-fi-ness to the wacky misadventures of Dr. Smith, Will Robinson, and a robot. (laughs) Alright. I can respect that. During the campy Star Trek era. So, it's it's so much fun. And I recommend anybody go back and watch some... You don't have to watch all of it. Just watch a few episodes to appreciate just 
what made it good. <laughs> and I don't know. It's probably uh, yeah. Most... Lost in Space is my favorite anime. Do you want to talk about anime? I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like we should say something about it. Uh, Twenty five minutes into the episode about anime, actually. <clears throat> so okay, <laughs> um, you. <laughs> I like anime, and you are not that much of a fan of it, so... I've seen seven or eight shows. So tell me about what shows you've seen, and what you liked about them. Okay, so I've seen the Or usual. what you disliked about them. I've seen the usual uh, laundry list of shows. I've seen FMA, FMA Brotherhood, uh, Neon Genesis, the first arc of JoJo. Christ, I'm running a blank. I watched a little bit of Kill a Kill, a little bit of Naruto... Some of the more popularized American ones that we all sort of grew up on. Did you like Kill the Kill? No. No? No, I thought it was tits for the sake of tits. It's it's not. And it's um It's it's hard to dissect though. It's especially if you're not versed in uh the anime sphere. Mm-hmm. But the, the, there's more to it than that, but I it definitely comes across that way. Let's see, I've sampled quite a few. Let's see. I, I sampled uh, devil man, devil man, cry, devil, devil man, devil cry, man, cry baby. Yeah, which devil man, cry baby, devil is, may cry baby, is that show is why I I say if the tits are the best part, your show sucks. And I, I've not seen Devil Man Cry Baby, but I hear it's just tries to get by on how art house weird it is without having good writing. Yeah, it's like, oh no, a devil tag. I'm Devil Man. He starts sobbing, turns into a demon, rips him apart. There's 40 tits on the screen, and you get the next episode. Um, hmm. I just summarized the entire show. You're welcome. Thanks. Now I don't have to watch it. I sampled Blue Exorcist and <clears throat> hated it. Um, I watched Blue Exorcist back in the day, back when I was a bit more of a weeb with um, who who didn't have a handle on my tastes yet, and just kind of liked everything. You you, um, you and. You know, I, I I I enjoyed the aesthetic of it. You know, it was it was there, there's swords, there's elf ears, there's demons. Uh, that's my thing, or that was my thing back in mm-hmm. in those times. And uh, you know, I, I I enjoyed it for the sake of that. I thought the art style was fairly unique and fairly pleasing to look at. But yeah. on the whole, on the whole, there's not much going for it. Like I, I watched a couple, a few episodes of it, but. It was really hard for me to sit through, given that I've been persecuted directly by Christianity. And I like—I was just sitting there, I was like, yeah, you know what, I fucking empathize with this bro, I'm gonna turn this off because I'm getting angry. And it's, it's just something I deal with, but, like, you know, you, you watch something and you get angry. You ever, you ever just yeah. get angry when you watch a show because you've dealt with that shit? Um, kinda. I, I, I feel like I have, but I can't think of any examples right now. Yeah. Um. Let's see what else. I watched all of Yuri on Ice. Not too proud of it, but I got the poster. LMAO gay. I uh. Um. I hear it's actually a very well written show. It is. It's um. The art's good. The narrative's good. The. I mean, the fact that they were able to animate the ice skating so well. <clears throat> yeah. Mm. I heard the, the, the woman who, like, uh, headed that project or whatever just is, like, a huge ice skating fan and has been just animating figure skating just as a thing to do for, like, her whole life and finally just got, like, funding for her dream um, anime ice skating project. It shows. It shows. Like, you can tell it really comes from somebody who appreciates the sport. Yeah. So, so yeah, I watch uh, My Hero Academia. I don't watch it like every time it comes out. I gotta wait for five or six episodes because the filler is. I really feel like that show could have some fat trimmed off of it. Um, I have got a lot to say about how they could improve My Hero Academia because I feel like at its core, it's so mm-hmm. like strong. But there's, ah, there's so much unnecessary padding. Mm-hmm. Here, here's my main thing about My Hero Academia. They need to just fucking get rid of the League of Villains. That really? show is at its best when it's just Deku in school. 
Really? Yeah, absolutely. That's when I'm, that's when I'm snoozing. <laughs> then you're not fucking paying attention, man. I don't know. When I the guess. fucking League of Villains show up, they just derail all this character. Okay, fucking. They're villains. They do. They derail society. They well, derail yeah, the narrative. Well, but not in like an artful way. It's it's <laughs> it, it feels like the League of Villains to me is like an example because obviously My Hero Academia was a um, <clears throat> excuse me was a manga before it was an anime, as a lot of shonen anime are, and um. And the, the, there's so many examples in Shonen Jump manga of um, of the editor like really jumping into the writing process. Like the the mangaka, the the manga writer and illustrator brings in a chapter or something, and and like the editor kind of tells them what to do. Mm-hmm. This famously fueled the Cell Saga in Dragon Ball Z. Mm-hmm. If you'll notice, the first half of the Cell Saga is just kind of they're just like jumping around. And like, uh, and a new villain shows up every couple of chapters. And what that is is because like, uh, Akira Toriyama's editor, like, wasn't happy with the villains he was coming up with, and he was like, write a better one. <laughs> and uh, fair enough. And so the the androids were supposed to be the villains of the Cell Saga, and he was like, that's gay. And <laughs> uh, and he's like, all right, I'll write in this buggy guy, and that's why Cell just shows up out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. And uh, and. Um, and the editor was like, uh, this bug guy looks stupid. I don't like it. And so that's why that's why he evolves into perfect cell to make him look more like a proper villain. <laughs> okay, uh Christ, what other animes have I seen? Wait, wait, I, that was just that was my preface to my hero academia. So yeah. it feels like the League of Villains is very much like a um an editor. Like jumping in to like fucking tell tell this manga writer like what is best for their narrative or like or like what the teenage boys in Japan want to read about week by week. Yeah. Which maybe it works better on like a um a fucking weekly basis. I don't know, whatever. Keeps them interested for that chapter, but but makes the narrative as a whole weaker. Mm-hmm. But I feel like, the, you know, uh, I think his name's Horikoshi, the creator of My Hero Academia, you know. The, it's called My Hero Academia, My Hero School. It's about it's about this guy going to hero school and having trials and tribulations in school. And the things that go on at hero school are obviously interesting because it's not just school, it's fucking hero school. And I feel like his editor was very much like, this guy's just fucking in school. He needs a villain to fight. And the League of Villains came in, and this fucking jackass with a hand on his face is there now to fucking yeah. just, just make shit stupid. Superhero societies tend to have super villains because there are good well, and bad yeah, people. Yeah, but that's not what the central narrative is about. It's about fucking... It, you know, it doesn't tie in super terribly. It's, it's not like the worst thing that could have happened. But I just feel like the show would be better if it spent more time focusing on... Uh, Izuku's fucking training to become a hero because, okay, the the fucking heights. Uh, I'll tell you, you the uh, Shigaraki. I think that's the hand guy. Yeah, Shigaraki Tomura, the hand guy, is he he could be a good antagonist. I think he's got some things going for him, he's but he's not as right? a, he's not as good as an antagonist as uh, Todoroki was. Todoroki is a good antagonist because he, you know, contrasts Deku and challenges him. That's why the the fight between Deku and Todoroki in season two was like the height of the show for me. There was so much going on there. Um, you, you'll never see that between Deku and the hand guy. They're just fucking there. And uh, mm-hmm. Todoroki was a good antagonist. Bakugo was a good antagi- uh, uh, antagonist. Aizawa was kind of a good antagonist for that one part. He, what well, you, you, you've kind of got to be a little bit looser about what your idea of an antagonist is, but like, um, uh, by definition, sense it's you know somebody who stands in the way of the main character. So, yeah, it doesn't mean guy who literally wants to blow up Japan. It doesn't yeah. have to anyway. And um, this, this this show is at its height when it's Deku like you know growing as a person and learning how to be a hero and touching fucking other people and helping them become heroes and like 
it's the, the this show is best when it's focusing on school and i know that's weird but it is i guess uh let's see other animes i've seen i watched kiba one punch man the first one punch arc man of, was great oh it was amazing the first arc of jojo hmm I've been sleeping on JoJo. A lot of fucking JoJo. As 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 much as I hate to admit it, I watched all of Oron High School Host Club. Oh, <laughs> oh I, I think know. JoJo Part Five came out like this month. Did it? Yeah. JoJo fans rejoice, and uh, most recently I watched Violet Evergarden, which I thought was absolutely splendid. I've heard it's shit. <laughs> Fucking, I hear most know. things are shit though, but okay. So as, as far as that's concerned, <clears throat> let's look. Let's go to Venom's. I Venom's Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, you've been talking about this fucking Venom thing. Okay, so <laughs> critics gave Venom a thirty-one percent, and audiences have it sitting at eighty-eight percent, which means critics can be bought. They what? Can be bought. Oh, of course they can, man. Yeah. This are you insisting that they were bought to give it bad reviews? No, I'm just I don't trust Disney. I think what's happened is they've become so comfy in the MCU formula that they kind of expected uh-huh. that and where it broke away from it, they got sort of hateful. Was was Venom made by Sony? Yes. Okay, so so you're you're saying that potentially Disney paid critics to give the Sony Marvel movie bad reviews. I can see it. It would be, you know, I've heard of, the, the, there's obviously plenty of uh, critics being paid to give good reviews, but this would be the first time I really would have experienced uh, the inverse. But really what I'm saying is... I, I suppose it's possible, though. But. Critics should be taken with not just a grain of salt, but just a whole thing of salt, just a whole big box of salt. I mean, obviously think about things for yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think critics, when they're truly critics, are, you know, critics can be bought. You're right. That's why when I want, you know, to to view criticism, I just go to the fucking guys on YouTube who are just, like, reviewing things for uh, the passion's sake. Because, you know, you're going to get the real shit from them, but... Don't don't go the, to those guys either, and just like uh, just inhale their opinion and then exhale mm-hmm. it at people later. Um, you know, just use it to break down what you think about it. Yeah. That <clears> being <throat> said, Violet Evergarden's a goddamn masterpiece, both visually and narratively. Again, and- I have not seen it, but what I've heard people say about it is that it the narrative is kind of weak and relies on visual splendor to make up for that. Huh. Well, I disagree. I thought the narrative was okay. great. What the narrative is like what? This 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 main character is like a some kind of super soldier or something? She was an orphan girl that mm-hmm. was raised in the military to be an emotionless killing machine. Like a perfect That's why tool. I, I think I think you and I talked about this before, and when I when I saw the previews, I thought she was a cyborg or something. Uh, yeah, robot. Yeah, she had her arms blown off. Yeah. So she so, has mechanical hands. So mechanical arms. hands, um, emotionless, great at fighting. I just thought she was a war robot. Yeah, like you could call her that metaphorically, I suppose, but she is human, and that's mm-hmm. like what the show's about is her growing into her humanity and discovering emotions and learning how to cope with emotions and cope with the horrible atrocities she's done as these emotions become more available to her. That honestly sounds pretty promising. Yeah, it is because it's a good fucking show and critics can go fuck themselves. <clears throat> okay. Um, they can. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've always thought Rotten Tomatoes was a pretty reliable source, though. Nah. No? I don't I, buy it. I, I feel like it was at one point. Probably, but I think the second it went mainstream, something Which had was, to have happened. What, that was recently, wasn't it? 
I don't know. I've not really kept up with the the, the, the inner workings of Rotten Tomatoes. I, I guess I haven't either. But I, I, I'm not the anime guy here. You're the anime guy here, and I've just been sitting here. Talking. I'm the anime guy, so yeah, I don't know. What do so you? So fucking. So let's talk about your anime, the animes you've seen, the animes you recommend, the animes that make you happy. What is the one show that's changed your life that isn't Goron Logan? Oh, come on, man. You've already talked it, about it on the show. Well, yeah, but I could say so much more about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, a show that's changed my life that isn't Gurren Lagann? I don't yeah. know. Gurren Lagann has changed my life in the most significant way, and I could... I'm not fully prepared to, like, uh, parse in what ways and, like, how it achieved that, but, um... I don't know. Let's see. Something... Just narratively, like, it... it that one, that one hits my some string in my soul. Um, God, I don't know. Most other anime, I just like for the aesthetic. Plenty of them have good narratives, but they don't resonate with me thematically as much. So I guess Evangelion is a good one. Obviously, oh yeah, it's about that's... this fucking loser kid who can't f- come to love himself and. Uh, fucks everything up because of it and oh uh, yeah he's that's really really good it's a good show yeah yeah uh end of ava was you know not end of ava but you know it, they captured all just evangelion on the whole uh pretty great yeah we're, we're only one movie away from it finally being over yeah what's i i haven't seen any of the rebuilds i think i've said that on the show before but uh um um, I, I watched the first two rebuilds. I'm gonna wait patiently for the final film to come out, and then I'm gonna just sit down and watch it. Uh, how many are there gonna be in total? Four. Four. Okay. Four films, which I think is reasonable. You know what? On that uh, on that thing we've been talking about doing, we could do an Evangelion month that way. We could. That would be pretty cool. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be opposed to it. Um. Okay, we can talk about that after the show. Come on, let's talk yeah, about yeah. show stuff. Let's talk about things so, the audience cares about. Like, I, I want to engage them. I want to engage anime, my boys. Anime, anime, anime. Big-eyed anime waifus with the titties and the boing. Um, What's that show with the the anime girls that play... That, that like, fight each other with their ass and titties? Um, Kujo? Kaijo? Kaiju. No, Kaiju? not Kaiju. Kai Joe. Kai Joe. Have, have you seen that? Yeah. I've not seen it. I've seen a lot of clips from it. Mm-hmm. So what Kai Joe is, it's a, it's a shonen sports anime <laughs> that is based on a fake sport from Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball. The, the, <laughs> the sport of Kai Joe is a mini game in Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball. And uh, and the and these fucking like I don't know stoned anime producers were in the fucking like this I'm joking by the way but they were they were, they were in the fucking boardroom just fucking toking up like like dude yeah they were playing Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball and they're like this is just like fucking Dragon Ball Z man I can't believe we can make a show out of this so they did and you know the whole thing is a joke obviously they just. They didn't take it seriously. That obviously this is a ridiculous premise, and uh, they they treated it as such. So you can't can't say too much bad about it. But the 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 show is built on um, fucking absurdity. So it's all right. Fair enough. Fair enough. It seems like the kind of show that knows what it's it knows what it is. It knows exactly what it is, and uh, and yeah. it it doesn't try to say it's not. Mm-hmm. All right, so it doesn't take itself too seriously and be like, no, this is a this is a hardcore fucking action show, and it's got deep themes. It's like, no, it's ass the movie, mm-hmm. and uh, and that's fine. And honestly, it looks like it probably has some pretty decent like shonen battles in it 
but like not because they were trying to like make it respectable. It's not going to be respectable. It's ass the movie, and that's fine. But if you can have it be like interesting at the same time, why not go for it? It's lust. Lust keeps the show going. I've not seen it, but uh, I make such a harsh rule about not shitting on shows I've not seen. But I've it's... seen so many clips of it, dude, that just like aren't even sexy. It, it gets to the absurd point where it's just like. Just like fucking toilet humor about these asses flying around, and it's like not even like arousing anymore. Mm-hmm. So that they're they're not playing the like fan service card too hard, I think. Or I mean, they are, but like they're they're willing to like make a joke out of it and like kill your boner a little bit, I guess. Because it's all just a big meme. The tits are the best part of the anime. Well, Maybe. that's what I'm saying. Is like it's got tits and it's absurd, and but I think there is actually you know um, well constructed humor and well constructed fight scenes in the show. Yeah. Based on what I've seen, I've not watched it properly. I've only seen um, certain uh, uh, fights and certain scenes from the show. Huh. <sighs> I'm like I'm looking at Google images right now of it and it's just it has hmm. Well any stills you're gonna find from it are obviously some somebody has collected them to be fap worthy. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, uh fair enough, fair enough. Getting the fuck off that side of the internet for a while. Let's talk about a great anime. Uh yeah, Full Metal about... Alchemist. We've both seen that. I think we both liked it. I've seen both. I've seen both yeah. of them. Um, I want to talk specifically about Brotherhood, because fuck the original. Uh, the original had elements in it I liked. It, you know, I agree, but I don't consider it the true FMA experience. No, I think I, I think they're both worth watching, though. Like, the one maybe, thing... Maybe, I, but I don't know. I, I, just Brotherhood is, like, the story as it should be, I feel like. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like... I'm going to get it on the table right now. What I loved about the original was the homunculi were failed human transmutations. So Mm -hmm. at the end of it, I think it was Wrath. Wrath was the child of Sensei. And that was just this beautiful narrative about that, how that was her kid running around in the fucking forest and she had to take him in, but he was still a homunculi. And I thought, and like, I think Sloth was Ed's mother, and Whoa, they did a lot really? of yeah, and they did a lot of really cool yeah, fucking watch it. They did a lot of really cool stuff with that. So that that is interesting, but I feel like the homunculi being a failed human transmutation, in and of itself, kind of devalues the idea of a human transmutation failing, mm-hmm. because the, if it creates a homunculi, can't can it? St- can't it still kind of be counted as a success? Well, like, they, of course they went on, like, the different story arcs of how they wanted to be truly human, but they'll never be truly human because they have all these extra abilities and they don't die and they don't feel emotion like we do and they can't empathize. I, I feel like that's kind of weak because if, oh, I'm not truly human because I have superpowers, like... It's... you If, if they were, like, horribly disfigured, I could get behind it, but if... The, I don't know. I just I don't know I like I feel like it devalues the fact that human transmutation doesn't fucking work. Yeah, like I I enjoyed it for what it's like. This was God six seven years ago when I watched it, but I remember thinking, "Huh, that's pretty cool." I really like that. Well, I've never watched it fully all the way through. Does Ed like uh, spoilers? Does Ed die at the end? It depends on who you ask. Um. The problem... I remember seeing like a clip of the final episode and like he's in some underground ruins that are caving in all around him or something. So the problem with the first one is they don't necessarily make it obvious that there's a movie afterwards. And right. that movie is really fucking hard to find online. I-, I am blessed to own a copy that I found in a used game store. What's it called? I think it's just called the Full Metal Alchemist movie. 
So what happened? I, I know there are several. I don't know if they're Brotherhood. There, there's one where they go to some sun land or something, and then there's one where they fight Hitler. Okay, so the one you're thinking of where they fight Hitler is is that the end of the original they they warp to our world. That's so fucking fan fiction, though. And uh, he, Ed and his old man get sort of stuck here for a bit until they he can get back. And it's like, okay. I can't remember the exact logic behind it, but it ended the show nicely. Nicely. Yeah, nicely. <clears throat> yeah, they Conqueror came to Shambhala. the real world and fought Hitler. How how fanfiction.net can you get? I don't know. They it, didn't... It, just, just the premise is so fucking stupid to me. They didn't fight Hitler, though. They, they didn't? No, it was just the... The setting, the incidental setting, is was World War Two. Oh. I know Hitler was in the movie though. Yeah, it was just the incidental setting. So like, they ended up. He ended up having to get back to his original world for some reason. It's been a long time. I'm gonna rewatch it later because I'm curious yeah. now. But like fucking multiple worlds, is that even a part of FMA lore at all? Mm. It is the original. Ah. <sighs> But the original is just obviously a fan fiction of the manga. Yeah, the original's the original has its merits, and I respect it for what it is. I enjoy, the, the best. Fucking, the best thing about the original is the soundtrack. It had some of the best ops. Fucking, let's just sit down and watch the original and do a full critique of it. Oh, that's gonna take so much time. That's gonna take so much, too much time. I don't have that kind of time. I gotta go to work. I got it. I don't have the time. It's on. It used to be on Netflix. The original did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they uh, when they put the movie out, they threw Brotherhood and the original FMA, but without Conqueror of Shambhala, which once again try to make the full story available to people. You know, whatever. Huh. I can bitch about it. It just seems like such an obvious thing to do. You know, make the yeah, I guess full story <clears throat> available to people. Yeah. Eh. Um. FMA is good. Yeah. I like it. And it's some great world building, honestly. Uh it I, I think I think the world building was fairly strong. It's not the best world building I've ever seen, but I think the delivery is what did it for me because, you know, I've always said this that uh in world building and um suspension of disbelief is very important. And uh FMA doesn't like show you too much it keeps it keeps things hidden and then when like a new piece of information comes out you can add that to like the mental puzzle you're building uh and it does this slowly over the course of the show i remember i was pretty far into the show before i saw like a proper map of mm-hmm. like the lands surrounding a mistress yeah and like i i think they never explained like what lies beyond those lands no i don't believe they did either and that's i don't know some, something about that is very like that's how you world build you keep Ah, you you leave so many questions unanswered, and it keeps your audience engaged. Mm-hmm. I just I liked it. I liked. It. I liked it too. I felt like it had just enough world building to be believable. Like they had the they 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 established politics. They established how the alchemy worked. They established how the society yeah. and that little chunk of the planet worked. Oh yeah, the creator fully understood. Like, you know, everything's got to be logical. You know, and uh. Fucking. The, I was gonna say something, but fuck it. I like Full Metal Alchemist. Yeah, it's it's is, honestly is worth point. a watch. My, I do have one one like major complaint with FMA, mm-hmm. and that is the slapstick two thousands anime humor. I thought it balanced it. As much like serious I, I, I dramatic I think having shit. humor in the show is is you know that that it is a good way to balance it. I I think it should be a balanced show with serious subject matter and humor. Mm-hmm. But the humor was so fucking stupid. It just wasn't funny most of the time. Eh. And it was it was just very fucking gag manga to me. It just I don't know. I thought I, that- I've never liked that brand of humor. I thought it worked for what it is. Like, I'm looking at some stills of it right now. If whenever, like, they, they turned kind of chibi and said stupid shit. Yeah. And they'd whack each other. And it was 
it was fun. Like it was. It fun. worked, but it you know. I mean that that's the one thing that stops me from recommending this show to like normies, I guess. It is one of the two or three shows that I can recommend to any anybody who's looking to get into an anime that's not full of tropes. Like typical um FMA's got some tropes in it. But not it it's not built on them. I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's not like yeah. Dragon Ball Z or Kaijo or... Hey, Dragon Ball Z's got some interesting characters in it. Right. Dragon Ball Z is what you watch when there's nothing else on. You can watch nothing before it, nothing after it, and in 20 minutes be satisfied because you just watched a fight. I guess you're right. I mean, I've never been a big fan of I respect it, and I have nothing against it. I've just never been a big fan. Hmm... Um, yeah. Dragon Ball Z is cool. Yeah, it's cool. Um, I th- I really think Vegeta's character arc in Dragon Ball Z was pretty interesting. I know nothing about it. Please enlighten us. Well, okay, so Vegeta's... You know what? You, c- you can pretty aptly compare Vegeta to Bakugo in My Hero Academia. Mm-hmm. So Vegeta's this fucking guy. He's like he he thinks he's like the last Saiyan or like one of the two last Saiyans or whatever, and he he's worked hard all his life. And he I think he's actually the prince of the Saiyans. Like before their planet blew up, his dad was the king. And uh, God, I think the planet was actually called Planet Vegeta or something. So you know he's a very important dude, and he's got like a lot to to live on. And he ends up working for Frieza because his planet blows up, and he finds out he's not the strongest being in the universe or whatever or something. And uh, and he ends up working for Frieza, and like that's very much like a ego killer for him that like Frieza is powerful enough to boss him around. And uh, you know after after Goku de- defeats Frieza, Vegeta's got this whole big long thing of like. Just like trying to catch up and surpass Goku, who everybody likes, and like Goku is able to like, um, like learn and grow stronger so much faster than him. And it's like, it's this big, like, uh, fight between Vegeta and his ego to like catch up to Goku. And it's actually very cool. I guess. I mean, I guess. It's whatever. It's, it's not the best written fucking character narrative in the world, but you know, people think Dragon Ball Z is just just like nothing but um like action fan service when it does have, you know, some um story and you know, character development in it. Yeah, I mean Again, not the best, but it's there. Yeah. I like, I've never sat down and watched enough of it to really know what's going on you know so it's it's it is what it is yeah um dbz kai made it more um digestible did it yeah like i started watching one of them i can't remember which one it was it's one of the ones that everybody says is horrible but for some I, I was it gt i think so i watched the first 13 episodes of that and thought it was decent but i don't know i fell off i just lost interest you know uh gt is not real isn't it? What's wrong with it? Um, it's it's just um, Toriyama didn't make it. <clears throat> oh. So the Dragon enough. Ball manga ran forever, right? Mm-hmm. And they made the original Dragon Ball show out of it, and they made Dragon Ball Z out of it, mm-hmm. and then the manga ended, right? Yeah. And the anime producers were like, "We can't end this. It's making too much money." So they made GT without Toriyama. And a few years later, he was like, um. He, he just came back and was like, what the fuck is this? This is not canon. I don't approve of it. And he made Dragon Ball Super as like the proper continuation of Dragon Ball Z. Mm. So GT is like not canon and it is like denounced by the creator of Dragon Ball. Oh, okay. I watched a little of it and thought it was alright. You know, some of it was fine. But just, you know, that which survived on the... Um, the Dragon Ball aesthetic, I guess. Mm-hmm. Hmm. There's just so much fun. Like, Dragon Ball's one of the oldest anime, though. It's been around since the 80s, hasn't it? 
It has, yeah. God, that's... It's got to be a contender for one of the oldest. Hell, Here's something. I will say, Dragon Ball is one of the few anime you, sh- you should watch dubbed. Mm-hmm. Because the sub, the Japanese dub, has one glaring issue. And that is that the voice of Goku is literally an old lady. <laughs> See, most anime you really just want to watch in Japanese because the voice acting is superior. Because I I feel like the English voice actors don't really care. They're just getting their paycheck and leaving. Right. Especially nowadays. There there are some good animes from the the mid... the, the, uh, The 90s had a couple of good ones. And then the mid... The the 2000s to the mid 2000s had some some pretty good dubs, and then from there it's just been shitty, stupid weeb kids who are like, I could do anime for a living, fucking going to the sound booth. Um, that's what it sounds like, and they all sound like they're like seventeen year old cool guys, you know? They do, and they are like <laughs> like these fucking no, radical bros. Mm-hmm. There's one. You may be thinking that because in recent years, like all the male characters have been like voiced by like one dude who fucking Has it? sucks ass. Um, I, I, I his name escapes me right now because you know I never cared to like remember it. But I, I watched but Dragon uh, Ball Z about about like fucking Goku being like a an old lady. So obviously, back in the um, when they made the first Dragon Ball anime, when Goku was a young child. It is very commonplace for um, for women to do the voice acting for young boys because they can, you know, get their voice down to the or get their voice up, I guess, rather to the proper register. Whereas grown men, we kind of can't do a little boy voice anymore after our balls drop. Um, mm-hmm. So women women do the voice acting for for young boys in a lot of shows. It's oh, very yeah. commonplace. Like um, all of Timmy and so Turner. yeah, it's a, uh, Tommy Pickles is voiced by a, a woman. Yeah, I've heard, I can't remember her name right now, but she's so prolific. Like, is it? It's not Tara Strong, is it? Yeah, I think that's who it is. Okay, yeah, she's she's, she's a very popular uh, American voice actor. Yeah, because she's in everything. Um, yeah, I know, and um, pretty good at what she does too. Shout out to Tara Strong. But, Absolutely. So in in Japan, so they made the Dragon Ball anime first, where Goku was a little boy, and they had a woman voice Goku. And when they moved on to Goku being an adult, I, I, I think they thought it would be rude to fire her. Like, it, she, like and so they kept her on. <laughs> and she is still, to this day, as an old Japanese granny, the voice of Goku. That's, I gotta go back and listen to that. It's super, she, she doesn't even try to sound like a man. It's just like, just this old Japanese granny yelling at you when she goes Super Saiyan. So if if you're gonna watch Dragon Ball Z for the love of God, watch the English dub. Oh no, you have to watch the Japanese. Pay no. your respects to something that's amazing. I've not even heard her, and she sounds amazing. I love this woman. Oh my God, we do not disrespect her in my house. That's what the fucking producers said, I guess, and that's why she's still around. I guess it's whatever. It's yeah. whatever. I, uh... It is indeed whatever. It's so rare for me. Like, I, I watched, uh... I saw an ad on TV recently. I can't even remember where I was where TV was running. But I saw an ad on TV recently of an English, uh... My Hero Academia something. And, like, the, the, the voices sounded so out of place. You know, mm-hmm. and it sounded so bad. Like, it was meant for children. Which, I mean, obviously, it's all meant for children, but... Honestly, that's kind of the way anime sounds in Japanese to the Japanese. Really? Yeah, it's like, in anime, very much of the voice acting is, like, um... <clears throat> like, exaggerated. Like, the way, the Japanese you hear in anime is not how Japanese is actually spoken between Japanese people. I know. It's It's very showy and, like there's this weird thing if you've ever seen japanese people in movies like japanese actors who are from japan Mm -hmm. there's this weird fucking like way of doing it that's like i don't know they don't try as hard to convince you kind of 
Like, mm-hmm. they're, they're not as worried about the realism of it all. Yes. And so, even, like, when you... Uh, Kill Bill is a good example. There were a lot of Japanese people in that. Japanese actors, because a lot of it took place in Japan. And, um... It's been years. Yeah, but I, I don't know. Maybe you can remember a lot of them, like, making ex- exaggerated, wacky movements. Like, they were, like, doing a stage play. Yeah. And that's just, like, how they're acting is that's just how they do it hmm. and that bleeds into everything kind of and their their anime is very like very just fucking japanese stage play <laughs> yeah I, I, i'm sure somebody could come up with a better way to describe it than that but that's that's always been my analogy for it yeah exaggerated really is the word <laughs> yeah I keep hitting my damn microphone and I'm going to have to cut so much out. Is that so, why you keep putting timestamps in the chat? Yeah, because I keep smacking it. I don't even c- hear it, to be honest with you. I can see the line come up and I'm just like, Ugh, that's more work I have to do, <laughs> but I'm trying to get comfortable. And it's it's such a pain Put in the Put a timestamp on that one. Fuck you. No, fuck you. That's, going, <laughs> that's, that's staying in so everybody knows what a jackass you are. I'm a pretty big jackass. <laughs> So, do you, oh. have a favorite, do you have a favorite anime, Zed? Fucking Oron High School Host Club. Really? No. Like, what even fuck? Okay, thank God. Um, that, that doesn't mean I don't love it. I really, really love it, but no. Um, okay. Hmm. I don't know if I have a favorite anime. Like, I've never watched one that really, like, affected me like you have. Like I've watched it's, plenty. It's, where I'm I've like, watched so many anime, and Gurren Lagann is the only one that like really spoke to my soul. The only one that I've ever watched where I keep going back, thinking about it, and thinking about it, and I think it's because of the suspension of disbelief, like you've talked about, is uh, mm-hmm. Neon Genesis. Oh, I forgot to mention that I've watched the first season of Attack on Titan. But the my- first season is the only thing worth watching. Please don't continue. Like, the only thing the first season left me with was what are the Titans and what's in the basement? And you can get on a wiki right now and find that out. Yeah, you can. And uh, and the journey to those answers is not worth it. <clears throat> the first season of Attack on Titan is pretty solid. Yeah, After that, the show, show is complete dog shit. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how they went. Well, okay, so... The thing about Attack on Titan that was so like amazing to me and impressive is the fact that the the studio who made the show at the time was brand new. Attack on Titan was their first production. And so they made Attack on Titan, they made the first season and it was great. And you know, and it blew up and it got all this attention. And uh and then they stopped and uh they took a, like a five year break between seasons. They took five years to make Attack on Titan season two, because they were making this other project called uh, Cabinary of the Iron Fortress, which I haven't seen, but it's visually it's Attack on Titan, <laughs> and um, but with zombies instead of giants, and apparently it's shit, and it's just a visual spectacle. And, uh, and they wasted all their time and money making Cabinary of the Iron Fortress. And, uh, and like, five years later, they were like, all right, I guess we'll make Attack on Titan Season 2 now. And, um, and it was half as long, not high enough production value compared to the first season, and uh, total shit. And yeah. I guess the story being total shit, you know, that's, that's in the hands of the mangaka. But... But it was just a really bad way to follow everything up, was to take all this money that Attack on Titan had given you, make some shitty side project that is just a rip-off of Attack on Titan that wasn't even that great, and then come back to Attack on Titan with a lackluster follow-up. Yeah. Fair enough. Like, I know there's uh, three seasons out now of it. I think the third season is, like, currently airing. I just don't feel compelled to watch it. I'll tell you, I watched season two. 
Mm-hmm. Horse shit all the way through. Complete horse shit. Weird retcons. Just nothing interesting happened. It's like they go out of their way in season two to 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 get a cliffhanger ready for you at the end of every episode, and they're just fucking weak. Yeah. It's... Let me ask you this: you you watched all of the first season? Yes, it's been a while. It's been a hot was time. was it ever established in season one that Titans can't move when the sun goes down? I don't think I've ever heard that. I don't remember. No, that. and in season two, like halfway through season two. They just present this idea and start operating under the basis that it's been the case all along. I just figured they slept. Like any other living no, creature. No. It, in fact, I think... I don't know. They never said anything about it. I, I don't know if we actually saw Titans at night. I feel like we must have at some point. Based on how the, the fucking setting always seems to be sunset. Yeah. But, but halfway through season two... Okay, it contradicts itself in the same season or something. And it's like these guys are like riding the horses slowly through the dark to check the wall for a breach. Mm-hmm. Uh, because Titans like got through a certain part of a certain wall. And, uh, and so they sent two teams out to meet in the middle to like ride along the walls and look for the hole. Mm-hmm. And it's the middle of the night and all they've got are torches and there are no stars out or something. And... Um, and they're they're like looking around this this big tension building moment about it's dark, uh, the Titans we can't see them they could come at us from anywhere right now and then in the next episode they 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 start building a plan around the fact that when the sun goes down the Titans like become immobile and can't move. Why? I just figured they rested at night like any other living creature. It's 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 a fine like I don't know. It's maybe something to do with their physiology and how they're created that will be revealed later. That they're, oh, we'll tell you one day. Like, you, you can't present all these questions without answering a few. Yeah, it just... Uh, when when all you do is build suspense without giving the audience any, like, fucking sense of discovery... No, nobody's gonna continue to fucking go on with that, especially when your suspense building is sometimes creating retcons like that. So I, I'm just not a fan of fucking that thing that are you, that happened. Are you worried that One Punch Man will happen like that? Because it's been so long since season one. I am a bit worried of that because I loved season one of One Punch Man, and. Um, I Apparently, feel like promising could... things go on in the manga, but I don't know. Season one, son of a bitch, I keep hitting the damn microphone. I feel like I say leave it in. I say leave it in. It's funny at this point. So, like season one of it was really good, but like I felt like the narrative got to like that all that stuff you were complaining about in My Hero Academia, like a bunch of just crap. <laughs> shoehorned in like a, a council of heroes and some interstellar thing looking for the strongest thing in the universe to fight and it's just i don't know i feel like that does feed into one punch man's uh, central narrative pretty well actually really i, I do. Know, it, it felt <clears throat> kind of i don't want i don't want to say forced it just felt silly of course it's silly it's one punch man what you it's it's silly on purpose, man. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I don't know. It just it's been a hard. The mess joke about the, the the heroes association <clears throat> is the fact that Saitama was a hero for fun. Yeah. And uh, and then he learns there's actually an association that he needs to be registered with, and was like, I I didn't even know this, and he's like the top hero, and yeah. nobody knows it, and that's this whole fucking. It kind of feeds the you know the central. Um, meme i guess of the show there's there's not a central narrative so much as there is a central meme <laughs> with one punch man you know which I, I think plays to its strengths pretty well but yeah the fact that you know he he didn't even know he needed to be registered with the heroes association didn't know there was such a thing that's that's pretty cool and then you know obviously this this big bad uh, alien guy i think his name was boros or something um, was fucking looking for the strongest being in the universe because he thought he was it, and you know, 
that plays in back into the central meme of, of course, Saitama is the strongest guy around. That's the whole point. Um, and, you know, Boros is this huge, big bad that's like, I am, I've am i punched planets to death and Saitama just fucking wrecks him without even having to try. And it was still a hype battle despite all that. Yeah, absolutely. The, th- the thing about One Punch Man that is so great about it, I think, is the fact that it, it is a satire of like over the top shonen anime while also just being a pretty great over the top shonen anime. You know, honestly, if all of season 2 was just wacky misadventures, I would be happy with it. Yeah, it's all about the wacky misadventures just set to the beat or I don't know, just just in the fucking just set to fucking like extravagant hero stuff, but it's all it's all about the wackiness. Yes, absolutely. Like the fucking, I think, what was it? The second or third episode where Saitama and Genos fight that big beetle guy in the science place. That was a pretty good episode. That was a good episode. I really And, and like the punchline at the very end was like Saitama missed the sale at the grocery store. Yes, absolutely. That was pretty great. That was pretty great. Oh, Lord. That was a good show. Rest in peace. Season yeah. two is probably going to suck. You know, I, I, I am I'm sure hoping they prove me wrong. I, any commenters who come back like, hey, it was good. You're wrong. Ha ha. Like, I hope I am wrong. Yeah, I hope that happens, too. Like, I want it to be good. Uh, speaking of shows, it is now time for our one hour and 16 minute ad break. And boy, oh boy, do I have some great offers for you. So... Given that this is the 10th episode of Claptrap, I have a special surprise for everyone. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Go on, please. So, have you ever thought to yourself, huh, I really like this show, but I wish I could... (laughs) No. No. (laughs) The answer is no to everyone. (laughs) I wish it was slightly more convenient. Oh, so ever slightly. Well, do I have news for you. When this, Please tell us, Zed. When this episode airs, I will be pressing play on a special project. I am going back. Th- I am going back through all the old episodes, cutting out every long pause, balancing all the audio to where it's more, I guess, palatable. It's 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 just better. I am fix refixing the audio, and I will be live streaming every episode on this YouTube channel, so you can just. Turn it on and listen whenever you want without interruptions. Won't that be nice? And since we're not... What are you going to call this new service? Claptrap Live. Oh, I thought it was Claptrap Radio. Even better. Okay, great. So, when this episode glows live, Claptrap Radio will also... Glows live? What is wrong with you tonight? (laughs) You're making me laugh. Stop it. So when this episode goes live, Claptrap Radio will also go live. And that concludes our one hour and 16 minute ad break. Nationwide is by your side. Subway. Eat fresh. I can't even remember what we were talking about. Um, Claptrap Radio sounds cool, though. (coughs) I'm hoping. I'm hoping it'll be cool. I don't know if we're interesting enough for somebody to listen to a 24-hour feed of our voices, though. You know, you can turn it on, listen to a little here, listen to a little there. Yeah. It, it's not meant to be something you listen to 24-7, even though we will be live and on the air 24-7 pre-recorded. It's, it's not us there, actually. It's just old episodes playing, in case that wasn't clear. Of the evenings, I will have the chat up if anybody shows up. Oh yeah, we've got a Discord now. I don't think we've pub- published that yet. Yeah, we do have a Discord, but I was Is Claptrap Radio, is that in the Discord, or is that on a YouTube stream? That'll be the YouTube stream. Okay. And then you'll be in the Discord chat? <clears throat> I will be in the Discord chat. I, am al- I always have Discord on me with my phone, and I suppose we could put the Discord live when this episode comes out. Okay. Um, if you want to join the Claptrap Discord, link down in the description thank you now for the one hour and 19 minute ad block 
We've still been doing ads the whole time. Okay. <laughs> so, have you ever said to yourself, man, I wish Discord allowed me <clears throat> to be a part of an amazing community and let me self-plug my own projects? Because most Discords don't let you do that. We have, in our Discord, a shameless self-promotion channel. Oh, yeah, we do. Because God knows we're having a hard time getting our name out there. Listen, we know what it's like. And, um... Fucking losers who go into people's Instagram comments and be like... I I saw a comment recently that was like, I hate to be one of those people who plug their stuff. And then they just plug their stuff. Yeah. Like... Like, trying to be a little bit self-aware about it doesn't... It's... It, okay, plugging plugging what you're making, it is shameless. When it's in a sphere that's not meant for it. Yes. But now you have that outlet. So, we have a single channel with four text channels, sub-channels. I'm not sure the proper jargon. One for art, one for music, one for video, and one for streams. Yes. Do we have an NSFW chat? Uh, yes, hentai only. Oh, no. No real life NSFW? I get that. Yeah. Yeah, there's... Th- okay, so, it, so it's like an NSFW art channel? Yeah. Uh, I, I can appreciate that. I, th- I think that's the safest thing to do. Yeah, because there's just so much... You know, you don't want... Eh, people suck. People suck. Yeah. So, only only the the, the animation, the hand... This is art appreciation. Mm-hmm. Only so, hand-drawn titties in my NSFW chat. Yeah, that the the real stuff. It's just overrated at this point. We gotta. <laughs> You're not wrong, man. <laughs> You're not wrong. Okay, I, I'm done with my ad. Um. Yeah. So the Discord's cool. Uh, Claptrap Radio is gonna be streaming on the YouTube channel uh, by the time this episode's out. That's right. That's right, and I will have my very first Zed's Wednesday Wisdom. Up. Zed's Wednesday Wisdom. Every, um, I'm assuming, Wednesday. Yes. I guess when this goes live, it'll be last Wednesday, <clears throat> and this coming Wednesday will be episode two, so that's okay. going to be... A- Since that's in the past and the future, but right now it's in the future and the past. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about what exactly Zed's Wednesday, Wednesday Wisdom is, or do you want to keep it, like, um, self-contained? I'm going to keep it self-contained, but it's exactly what it sounds like. Okay. Fair enough. Absolutely. Um, I guess I'll talk about my show, that my solo show that I'm going to be doing on the channel. Mm-hmm. Oh, do and, tell. And I think that's going to be taking up Monday's time slot. So we've got Claptrap is going to start airing on Fridays instead of Saturdays because, holy shit. Um, what better way to spend your Friday night? Yeah. And Zed's Wednesday Wisdom will obviously be on Wednesdays. Absolutely. And, uh, and on Mondays, you'll see me. Doing a show I call Drock, where I draw and I talk. Fantastic. And that's about it. So, for more of on these great products, visit twitter.com slash... God, I forgot our at. What is our at? Dear Lord. <laughs> it's at Claptrap Podcast. At Claptrap Podcast for more of these great, great products. Be sure to uh, subscribe. This is cringy and gay. Anyway, uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Smash that motherfucking like button. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm done. Weren't, weren't we talking about <laughs> anime a minute ago? What did you interrupt me? You interrupted me in the middle of some fucking conversation. <laughs> I found a hole that I could start plugging our side shit in. Okay, okay. anime. Our ads are done. I don't know what that was. Anime, that was anime, ads. anime. Um... Uh, anime. Fuck, I can't... My, my train of thought is completely derailed now, you cocksucker. Anime. Anime. Manga. Uh, Gurren Logon was pretty good. Everybody go watch Gurren Logon. Yeah. Fucking... Hentai. Now comes the hentai section. What do you? What's your? What's your favorite hentai, Zed? I don't know. I don't watch. I don't. Really? I thought I, you did. I have never sat down and said I'm gonna seriously watch a hentai show. I cannot. Et- well, who fucking has? Like, I, I, when you say what's your favorite hentai, you 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 you're like, what's your favorite hentai show? Because I don't have. I'm one. not asking you to base it on your on a fucking narrative or anything. Like fucking. 
Who's seen a whole hentai show all the way through? I just skip to the scene I like, and then I nut, and then I X out the win- window. Like everybody else. Yeah. Like, I just, I don't, I don't think I have one. I, uh, I like something with, uh, the, like, like anything I watch, I like something that stretches the imagination a little bit. Something with fantastic settings. It'll stretch something, all right. Something perhaps <laughs> in the past or in the future or high fantasy. Um, something that could not logically happen in real life. Fair enough. <laughs> um, because regular sex has just become too mundane for me. <sighs> What's the, I, I think it was a Game Rooms quote. Dan was like... I don't know, they were voicing some character, but Dan was like, I've, I've become so desensitized by internet porn, you've got to show me some really fucked up shit to get me off. <laughs> I... Uh, I think there's only been one time in my entire life that I've been interested in the narrative. And it was actually a comic. Oh, well, why don't you tell us about that comic? This goes against the YouTube terms of service. Does um, it? Yeah. How? I think it does. Let me look. YouTube terms of service. Oh, great. We're back to Googling stuff in the middle of recording. Hey, shut the fuck up. I'm the one that edits out the pauses. Okay, okay. So, as long as you don't complain about it, it's not a big deal, because I'm doing all the heavy lifting. Well, I'm gonna complain about it. You're gonna complain um, about it. Um, Stop. Oh, stop. Okay, so... Uh, Googling... Uh, YouTube okay. reserves the right to decide whether content violence, viol- etc., etc., but not limited to pornography, obscenity, or excessive length. YouTube, that's Excessive bullshit. length. There, there's so much bullshit when it comes to length. YouTube may at any time without prior notice <laughs> and in its sole discretion remove such content and or terminate... like 24-hour long videos? Of absolute nothing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's not like talking about a porn manga is pornography. That's true. Okay, so this actually had a... I forget the name of it, but it had a pretty good narrative and decent like world building. It was about a woman that every time she got off, she turned into a demon. Yo, my kind of woman. And like she went on adventures with like Succubi and shit like that. and She was getting conjured up by necromancers, which... <laughs> She's like, what the fuck? It definitely why? sounds like your kind of thing, man. She's like, what the fuck? Why am I here now? They're like, we fucking control you. And she's like, I'm 20. <laughs> I unfortunately don't know how the show or the manga ended. Or not even manga. This was American. Not even sure how the show was. Was it really? Yeah, hmm. this was done by some local. Well, it was done in a Western art style. I don't hmm. know how the show ended well, because. Th- there, are, there are plenty of. Um... Of Western doujinshi out there, actually, so yeah. it's not surprising. Because the the server that uploaded the comics stopped uploading it, hmm. so I don't got it anymore. That uh, do you remember? Oh, excuse me. Do you remember the name of it? Oh Lord, I'm doing this, aren't I? Okay, so let me look. Let me look. No, I don't remember the fucking name of it. You know, I look up so much shit, and I talk about it while I'm looking it up. And the only time you complain is when I say the word Google. You didn't say Google last time, and I complained then. Yeah, you just complain. Okay, so I'm That's not true. I'm not seeing it right off, and I don't want to put too much time into looking. Yeah, up. I get you. I mean, uh, you're always there. It's like Saturday night, you got the lotion, you're like, oh man, what's that one show called when I had the big nut? Oh, I can't remember, but I wish I could see that one time video. Guess I'll watch this one instead. Oh, so fucking tragic. It's very tragic. <laughs> you just, you have to settle for a lackluster nut. It's very tragic. <laughs> I'm sitting it's like, here. yeah, I nutted, but like, uh, it could have been the big nut. 
I- I'm sitting here looking for this comic now because you have me curious. <laughs> And somebody fucking drew you in with a... F- Whoa, make, gotta make sure this is the correct chat. Drew you in with this demon girl. Fucking... What, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> drew me in? <laughs> hey, fuck you, man. <laughs> uh, that's kind of accurate. <laughs> oh my god. Oh lord. <sighs> Fucking! I knew the anime episode would turn would go NSFW. We're gonna have to put eighteen plus. You know, honestly, we haven't even said very much about fucking anime. We've talked about quite a bit anime. I guess we have, but I don't know. I I I just always feel like with these broad topic episodes, we we fucking don't have enough time to say anything about something specific. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I get that. <sighs> So given that we just and talked, it's like we talked about FMA, we talked about e- Evangelion, but we didn't we didn't dissect enough of those that, that you know the, those um, contained things deserve more deliberation, and I feel like there, there's there's just not enough time in one claptrap episode, long as they are, to like fucking say anything of of um, value about any one given thing. Yeah, to sit down and break down. Each individual show, but I think, I think that's what where the shows like Real Magic comes in. Like we're sitting here, we're we're ch- cutting the shit, we're talking about shows, recommending them, ta- touching briefly on them, and you know, if somebody wants to look up the show and watch it for themselves, then they can do that. And if any one of our shows flop, one of our side projects flop, we could always do an anime dissection show. You know, this channel, it's. I'd be way into that. Yeah, yeah, we could. I don't want to, but we could. I mean, I, I think that in of itself, because I, I follow channels who are doing that very thing, mm-hmm. but way better than we could. Yeah, that, that's the problem. It's so, it's so cemented. Why am I still looking for a porn comic? You know what? Fuck it. I am. Because it's a demon porn. I am committed. But what was the name of it? So, yeah. It's called The Big Nut. <laughs> <laughs> Lord have mercy. All right, so do you want to break down your favorite anime since we were only at the one thirty minute? I honestly feel, you know, I'm not sure because, again, I've I've heard other people break it down in much more skillful ways, and I think there are other things I could say about it, but the, the subject matter is so weirdly important to me that i want to make sure i say it right and uh i don't know i i'm not prepared <laughs> you're not prepared to talk about any of the is it well, feels like you're I'll, always I'll prepared talk a little to... bit about it so gurren lagan is my favorite show ever i know uh, i think i said in a previous episode Many. i don't pick favorites yeah i don't have a favorite color i don't have a favorite food i don't have a favorite movie i don't have a favorite book um, but I have a favorite anime, and it's Gurren Lagann because it's you know spoke to me in such a t- to my ideals, I guess, in such a way, in such a pivotal turning point in my life too. Mm-hmm. It just like kind of helped me shape my persona of who I am as a person. Mm-hmm. And honestly, like I've I've met and experienced other people online who have had the same experience with the show, and you know. It's it's like finding kindred spirits, and th- th- there's something special about this show if it speaks to, you know, many people in this same kind of way. Mm-hmm. So, the show in itself, on, on, on a surface level, it is very much like a, um, a lot of people watch it and they don't, God... I'm I'm saying this stuff and I'm like, oh, I could I could just link to a video which I where I know somebody has said this better, but um but you know, a lot of people watch it and they they're like, oh, you know, I liked it, but I liked it because it was a shitty stupid action show with with robots and titties. But those people didn't like, I don't know, in- engage with the narrative the way it was meant. To, like they didn't they didn't see what was really going on there, I feel like. And there's such a, 
Gurren Lagann is a mecha show, right? And and mecha shows are, contrary to popular belief, never about the robots. They're always about the characters piloting the robots. They're they're always very character driven narratives for some reason. Um, and fucking and the character is very strong. So Gurren Lagann did this thing where it, like it, it kind of surprised you about who the main character was. God, uh, I feel like I'm getting into spoiler territory now because I know you don't know much about the show, and I, I, I would like for you to experience it kind of as blind as you can, because there is one big spoiler that kind of like shapes the whole perception of it. But the main character is about his growth from a boy into a man, right? And uh, just like what that means and like how it's communicated is very fucking. Um. Good. Yeah. How many episodes is it? It's like uh, I think it's twenty eight. Mhm. That's and actually it's very, reasonable it's, it's, for. Yeah, it's super consumable, and it's like it's split into two parts. There's a. The, there are two arcs to the story, and there's kind of a, a bit of a time skip in the middle, so it's in two parts, so you can consume them. Um. Like, as individual kind of things. Yes. So, it's, it's, very, it's very doable. And, um, and it, it, it's, a, it's a contained story. It is, a lot happens from beginning to end. And when the end happens, it doesn't leave like a, like a ooh, maybe we can make a sequel to this kind of thing. It doesn't want that. Um, when the story is over, it's over. We've reached the height of what can be done. And now it's time to fucking move on. Yes, and that is, that's very good. It's a very good show, and I know you 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 won't watch it to like meme on me or whatever, um, but I just I can't like unironically I can't recommend it enough, man. Hmm. Um, you, you've got to watch it in the right mindset though. You know, there there's so many examples of like, you know, this piece of media really speaks to me, and you you show it to somebody and they they it doesn't resonate with them in the same way. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. It was on I'm, Netflix. I, I'm last worried time that I... will happen. Yeah, it's 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 on and off Netflix every like few months. But last time I checked, it was on there. God, that's a motherfucker to spell, and I sp- did not spell it correctly. Um, let me. G u r r e n l a g a n n. Yeah. Yes. Uh, its full Japanese title is Tengen Topa Gurren Lagann. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can this. This is an old show. This looks like it was done with uh, Crayola. Crayola. What the fuck are you or, talking uh, about? Uh, not Crayola, but um, colored pencils. It looks like it was done with coloring pencils. Show me the image you're looking at. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. The show is very sharp in HD. Fuck, I... Damn it. What's happening right now? I'm fucking looking up Goron Logan for a third time, and I just got fucking toast. Okay, I spelled that Toast? I got... Yeah, toast popped up. Fucking bread? Whoa. I... I don't... Why? Because I spelled it wrong. What? I spelled it wrong and got toast. What did you spell wrong that... Goron Logan? How did you spell it and how does it that mean toast? Fucking... Fucking, I'll just send you a screenshot. You, it's, it's bread. It's not necessarily what? bread, but it's not toast, but it's bread. And for some reason, my stupid brain said toast. But here... There, see? Got some bread. Laugen. <laughs> Laugen bread. Yep. Um. Apparently it's some German that I accidentally put in. That looks very German. Yeah, How I... the fuck did you... <laughs> the, the, the real spelling is so much phonetically more simple than that. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, Lord, I feel like I'm living up to my caricature that you draw tonight. (laughs) Gwaurin Laugen. (laughs) Oops. Oops. Oh, Lord, I don't fucking know anymore. I'm looking at bread. Just spent, like, 20 minutes looking for a porn comic that I can't find. Um, (sighs) maybe. Should we wrap this one up? I I don't fucking know. I... We got the conference call afterwards we gotta do and Yeah. <sighs> I say we go ahead and wrap this up, man. You sound like you got nothing more to <laughs> I think Guaurin Laugen uh German German anime bread is is we're not gonna reach higher heights than this. So we're uh, not. We've peaked with this episode. Got we it. we have definitely <laughs> peaked. We did it early. This is almost as much of a tragedy as episode three. I thought this one would be really strong, uh, because of the subject matter, which um Hell, maybe we'll revisit it since there's always so much more to say about it. Anime part two. Anime part two. I'd do that. I'd do yeah, that. Yeah, we show. could do anime part two. Um, but for now, for now, wait, wait. Let me look at the calendar. Actually, yeah, nope. Hmm. I was gonna say it's your turn to uh, to pick next week's recording topic, but next week we are recording the Halloween special, so nobody gets to pick a topic this week. Um. Hmm. There's a lot of things I was wanting to ask you about that. To do what now? There's a like I was wondering how we were going to do that, but yeah. Well, uh, yeah, we talked about it. You're going to be up here next weekend, and uh, and that's the weekend before Halloween. So the Halloween special will go up on Halloween weekend, just a few days before the thirty first. Okay. Yeah. So this episode, and, uh, and we'll do it live together, and that'll make it easier to add the sound effects and all that. Uh, tune in on fucking October 29th. 26th. Oh, yeah. No, because we're doing them on Fridays uh, okay. after after the next one. So it'll be the 26th. October 26th is the Halloween Ghost Story Special, and it's mm-hmm. going to be a big deal. So, Yes. Come on by. That being said, that being said, oh, God, I have a lot of work to do with that one. That being said, I you it's your turn to take it out. It is. It's... It is. Take um, it out. Uh, fucking take it out. Um, Does Samuel L. Jackson like anime? Yes, I do. Hentai too. <laughs> Good night.